Hey there guys and welcome back. So, long time no talk. Uh, as you can see here, we have quite a bit of work that we did. And I know that this is a lot of things on the changelog right here. I swear it does not seem like it's as much as it looks. Or it's, yeah, whatever. Um, that's probably not the best way I could have phrased that. But, point being is that that's an hour, that's an hour and a half. That's an hour and a half, so that's like four hours there three hours there and another hour there right so we're looking at what eight hours worth of work here and I really don't know that it's as much as it seems honestly and back to it as you can tell with the number of CSS and the number of GUI changes right here again I've been saying this on forever and ever and I've never really proven myself wrong or never proven myself right rather is that uh, I was confident the GUI stuff would take me forever and I definitely think it did this session. And furthermore, that's kind of really annoying because with this nearly being 10 hours, right? That, with the amount that we've gotten done so far, I, I'm really, uh, I'm hoping that we do not go over the 80 hours. Let me put it that way. That's 10 out of the remaining 40 hours that I had allotted, right? So, again, slightly less than 10, but let's go ahead and look at it. Um... Actually, you know what? Let me... I changed my mind. Let's hop over to the actual demo itself. And this is not no longer the demo. This is the actual play button. The play button is now hooked up. We click it. Here is your main screen that you will end up on. You can see up here, this is going to be the navigation bar right here. So, for example, in a dark room, you would normally have a dark room right here, a silent forest right here, and then a dusty path right here and you unlock the other ones as you progress through the game so at first it's just a dark room and then you unlock a silent forest after you uh, need to go out and gather more wood and then after that you unlock a dusty path after you get the compass now I know this for a fact because I went back and part of this session the let's see let me kick you back over to github really quick just so I can point so GitHub, uh, I believe it was, no, it was this one where I was over by 22 minutes. So this one where I'm over by 22 minutes, that's actually because I hit a little bit of a slump at the beginning here because I was having a hard time visualizing how I, how I was going to lay this out. And furthermore, since we're basing this off of a dark room, I wanted to follow somewhat in how a dark room played because again, we're following up on that subgenre, so to say. So there should be some similarities in order to maintain the connection. So I went and started a brand new game of a dark room and it took me 45 minutes, at least 45 minutes just to get out onto the map because I wanted to at least get from start to map to see all the screens. When you, once you get to the map, then you've seen basically all the screens there are to see in the game. So I wanted to be able to see at least all the screens before I quit. And holy crap, that was a slog. So first off, goal is not to end up having the player spend 45 minutes to uh, get just to the combat because the combat is the more interesting part. The base building in the game is not really that interesting. So we really want to avoid that. Point being is that, um, well, I mean, the point being was that I looked at a dark room and Obviously, the layout here is a bit different. It is slightly different, I should say. Not a bit different, it is slightly different. First off, uh, you had storage on the right-hand side here. So you had, I forget what they called these. I think this might have been called craft right here, and this is where you made items. And this might have been build. This might have been build because you were building buildings. That sounds right to me. But then you had storage on the right-hand side, which was all your items and resources. I'm only going to put resources up on this screen right here because this screen only cares about your resources. In this construct right here, because you can build uh, items and weapons right here, I will go ahead and have the quantity that you have in this table as well, which will replace having it over here in the list for the rest of your items. Since you can't craft resources, then that makes well actually in a dark room i should take that back in a dark room you can craft resources i don't know whether or not we'll do that honestly in this game we'll see what happens 
uh, still up in the air. Otherwise, the message log was unlabeled in the darkroom. It was just a, if I recall correctly, uh, I'm actually second guessing myself on that one, but now you have it over here. And furthermore, you'll notice these buttons. This took me a little while to get set up, but as you can see, it's broken. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, that and that. And I guess what happened here is, whoops. Well, I'm guessing what happened here is that I forgot to hide over flow is my guess. Let's see, status box body, hide or overflow hidden. There we go, there's that. So if I made that change, okay, now it, that's funny because I thought I had overflow hidden before in the initial testing and maybe that's just something I forgot. Um, it's one of those things. I do a good bit of the uh, CSS work just in browser, just using the inspection tab to uh, look at things and work on them. So that's one. Chances are that's one of the things that I forgot to copy over from the inspection uh, tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that really quick right now. So that would be in do 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 do. Where CSS? There it is. Uh, that would be in site.css and this is a status bar or actually you know what this is not in site this is in ui there we go status box and body there we go overflow hidden okay so that is officially fixed good bunch of men so uh, once uh, explain the UI so far and as you can see we have this replace batteries right here replace batteries is our uh, add wood to the fire button uh, feed the fire whatever the button is actually labeled in a dark room so gonna go ahead and hit this and as you can see we've actually got this little green box here if I hit it one more time we don't see anything message log should be popping up here I did not actually wire that up because I forgot so that's not a bug, that is just simply forgetting to implement that. But if I hit it again, you can see we now have two bars. So as you can expect, if I come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and just modify the UI in real time so that you can see what's going on here. Uh, if I just delete this, I think that should work. Yeah, there you go. So you can build up this power bar structure. Uh, a couple things to say about this. First off, the fact that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit F5 really quick. The fact that the uh, it's not animated bothers me a little bit. And second off, uh, that second click right there, I was kind of okay with it when I was conceptualizing it, not having, vi having any visual feedback. However, I think I am wrong. I think I have decided that I'm wrong about that one. So we may need to fix that. Uh, basically, the in a dark room, when you hit the feed the fire thing, it just gave you a message, right? Uh, but since we're having a lot more visual feedback on this game as opposed to a dark room, then we probably should have an intermediary bar here. So that's uh, problem number two. So problem number one was that there is no animation, it's just revealed, okay? The second problem is that there is no intermediary, intermediary stage right here. That could be fixed by two ways. One, I could either change the shape, uh, size of this. So when we get into looking at the code changes, you'll see that this is actually an SCV. I decided, dec decided to go with that. Um, so therefore we would have to uh, modify the size of this and we could also animate it in the same way. I just did, was not sure whether I'm keeping this is the problem. The Third solution, uh, the third thing we can do with this, rather, I guess I should say. Well, all right, third thing is for the intermediate, uh, intermediary, there we go, uh, sizes, we could actually break this up. So again, if I go ahead and uh, let me hit the inspect button, inspect on that element so that I can go ahead and not dig through the UI. And let me display none. There you go, instead of deleting it this time. 
So the a third option is to actually, instead of having five power levels here, which I thought was reasonable, have 10, have the full 10 power levels that the colony can support. And that would fix our problem because uh, instead of having, so this is one and two, this is three and four, this is five and six, seven and eight, nine and 10 right here. So that's how these power levels break down. So then we would just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten across four bars. That's the third option. The fourth way we can resolve all this is I could, instead of doing bars here, I mean, bars I thought kind of looked good in my opinion, uh, in my mind, I guess, is where I thought they looked good. But we could change this into something else. Like, for example, we could have a triangle, a power triangle, you know, display. And that power triangle display could modify in other ways, be animated in other ways. Uh, and furthermore, we could, I guess a fifth option, which could also happen with option number four, is we could change the color of these. So on one, this would be like a red. On two, on the intermediary two, because it's one, two, this could change from red to a slightly less red, more of an orange, and so on and so forth down the line. So there are a bunch of different ways we can modify this to have it better represent. Um, and I guess that's all to say. Again, as you can tell, with eight hours in, and this is what I've got, that is not great. Now, to be absolutely fair, I guess I will say that there is definitely more going on behind the scenes than that may represent. So let's go ahead and hop over to VS Code and I will drag DOS GitHub over to my other screen so I can see it. And let us get into code changes. So I'm not gonna, uh, let me see. Is there any CSS that I really feel like we should be going over? Okay, so first off, I guess the CSS we should be going over we did not have UI.CSS before, we only had site.css. I decided to break this up so that site.css is really generic stuff and UI is specifically for parts of the UI. Um, obviously this stuff actually should probably be moved over to site. The reason I put this here is because this was only affecting the home page at first. So that's why this was moved over here. But at this point, I probably should just make it part of site UI. However, if you keep on reading through here, this is the status panel elements. And then as we go down here, we've got the home page, admin, events, etc. So that's how I decided to break it up. So now site again only has primitives. And that is basically it you know, elements that are used throughout the code instead of elements specific to certain parts of the UI, which again, status box could, you could make the argument it's kind of a primitive, but because it's only ever used on the status, pa status panel of the home page, that's why it's over here in UI instead. So that's the first change. Uh, second change is that we needed to populate the UI and I bounced back and forth with a couple different ideas, okay, on how to do this. But what I ended up with is over here in game.js, scroll up a little bit. I decided to give ourselves a UI. And the reason I did this is because that's basically how we pattern the rest of the site, right? The rest of the game is for every object in this list, for every module in this list, it had a corresponding GUI uh, module. So since that was the case, that's what I decided to go with. And because the UI will need reference back to the game, I decided to go ahead and just store it, or I guess I, that's not the way I should say it. Um, this home, this game GUI right here has a lot of useful stuff on it, a lot of useful references, and therefore other GUIs, for example, the colony GUI, is going to want to be able to reference game.ui. So for example, right here, game.ui, in order to get whatever element it wants to add its own elements to. 
So for example, it wants to add the status panel to the game's UI. Therefore, it calls the, uh, it uses the game's, the game UI's status panel callback right here. So right there, that is the status panel on the home page. So that is the reason for attaching the game UI to the game object. So if we come over here, you'll notice that we also do the same thing on colony. We set up a UI. This is not capitalized right here because my, uh, what I did here, you know, everything was capitalized on the game object. So I decided to do that with this UI, whereas everything on the uh, colony was not. So therefore I decided to just keep it uh, consistent individually as opposed to across all things. So point being point being is if we set up the UI, you can see that it sets up its new game GUI and then has that set up its UI. And then it calls the colony has that set up its UI and calls message log and sets up its UI there. Message log, log is a new object that we did not have before. Message log is special. The message log really is something that only exists on the front end. I've got a dev note right here explaining all that. Uh, because the message log has no back end real features to it, it doesn't do anything or modify anything on the back end. It does not have its own corresponding GUI element. It is just, it just exists. At the same time, it has to exist kind of on the same plane as the background elements. So it's kind of something that straddles the line between back end and front end. And therefore it is only one file and it, uh, is attached directly to game. Let me get back to game. Actually, let me keep this open really quick. There we go. Keep open so it doesn't close on me and game keep open. Try again. There we go. So you can see that we initialize message log directly on the game. That's right. This right here. So that's the idea with message log. Uh, also, we have this new game feature, which we can look at over here on the uh, main page, the light like .html. You can see that now the play button go ahead and hides the menu, calls new game and sets up the UI. So that's how we start the game. And I've already explained all this stuff. So we ignore that. Uh, this one exception, you start the game with three batteries in order to power up the station. That's how you start the game. So we can move on next to the message log, which was the second or actually it was the, it was kind of the first thing that I developed. Uh, there was a little back and forth between developing the games UI and developing the message log message log really got most of its stuff done before the game UI. I actually went back and forth between having this game.js and having a home.js because I figured the homepage was its own UI. So there is a little bit of ambiguity there on what exactly came first, but the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of the message log got done before I actually settled on having game.js and storing everything in there. So as you can see right now, we are set up to listen for Meeple modified and encounter initialized right here. Um, bu 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 and encounter initialized is so that we can display messages from, for example, combat. So in combat, you'll get a message on your message log, you know, bandit attacked, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is that situation right there. As I stated before, the message log does need to get set up with to do. Uh, and this would be power level increase. Or I guess I should just call this as is power level modified this dot game dot colony dot power level modified there we go so that this would then produce a message in the uh what you call it in the message box otherwise as we run through here you can see that we have this setup ui just like everything else um, this I did not come back to modify afterwards, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. This dot game dot UI dot status panel. And I'm doing, I guess the other, I should explain the reason I'm 
part of the reason why I'm getting these references directly from instead of leaving it at this is in case we change the name or change the format on the home page. So in that case, we don't want to have to come back through all the code and change it to, for example, document dot get element by ID new status panel. You know, we want to avoid that kind of thing. So we'll just keep on going back to this dot game dot UI dot status panel. And that will always point to the correct thing that we want. Point being. So as you can see, the status boxes are set up with the status box class, which handles the uh, CSS, uh, what you call it? Do, 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 do. Anything else I need to say here? Oh, here's something, uh, the fade out mask. So in a dark room, and I did like this effect, as you got, as a message went off the bottom of the message box, it kind of faded away. So that's what I have set up here. This is just an opacity mask, a gradient opacity, opacity mask. So it gradients out from alpha to white, top to bottom, so that it covers up more and more as you get to the bottom. And that is only in the, I want to say it's like the bottom some X pixels, or it may not be pixels. Let's see, we can check. And that should be in UI. Where is mask? Fade out mask. So it's in the bottom 25% of the uh, box, which sounds a little bit high. It's one of those things I haven't actually populated the uh, message box enough to see how much that really covers up. We'll find out and we may modify that to be like bottom 10% instead. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Do, 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 do. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Uh, this is something. This is actually something that I thought was pretty good. So, in add message, when we add the message, we can give it a notification color. Or, well, we'll give it the notification type, rather. Right here in notifications, this is a enumeration like we normally have, all right? So based on the enumeration, the status bar itself. So over here, we'll hop over to the internet re really quick and play. So this bar right here, this bar right here will flash a different color based on what the most recent message is. So that's how that will be set up. That way, even if you have this minimized, and you can't see what the message is, you can get an idea of what it's about by what the color is flashing. So that is the deal there. That's what this code does. I did go ahead and modify while we're here flash text and that is GUI site. So I did modify this, uh, added the background color so that you can flash background color as well as foreground color or font color, whatever you want to refer to it as. So that was a change I had here. Uh, this animation then had to be modified right here because we had to add the background color to it only if the background color was defined. I also uh, updated this stuff right here. So, 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 and that added the empty. So this is something, it's one of those things when I, I don't know when they added this because when I first learned JavaScript. I do not recall there being default arguments in JavaScript when I first started learning it. So I don't know when this popped up, but evidently you can now have default arguments, I guess. So it's one of these deals where I'm adding that back into my code. This default argument replaces the if, you know, not options type of options equals undefined. So this line right here is what I used to have all over the place, right? And now that I understand that JavaScript now has, and I say now has because again, I could have scored used to not have default arguments. This is what you would do before. You just create the default argument yourself. Uh, at least this is one way of doing it. There are other ways, other uh, patterns you could use, other um, design patterns, but regardless, regardless, moving on. Uh, let's see, we were just in message. I think we're done with message log. Let's check really quick. 
yeah, nothing really. I don't have anything else written for the message log because we sw uh, switched gears up and started working on the colony. So let's hop over to colony. Actually, let me double check. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, this I did add. That's right. So let's look at game really quick. So this is more or less taken out of the uh, colony. What you call it? The colony demo. Okay, as it says right here, adapted from colony demo. So back to on the internets right here. You had these buttons, right? To switch between. And that is exactly like how we set up the colony demo. So I just took from the colony demo a bit of the code and then just adjusted it to make it more interesting or make it more streamlined, I guess I should say. So we can go ahead and register pages on the home page. All we have to do is give it an ID and a display name. It will create the button itself in the navigation and then set the page based on the button. The uh, this uh, ID right here should correspond, as you see, to the box or the page rather. It used to be box on the colony demo. You will recall that I named them box. So, for example, Meeple box, I think, was one of them. Instead of doing page because it's a different page really is what it is. I could call it tab. You could do tab here instead. That would also make sense. But regardless, we get the button ID plus page I added onto the bot back end of it. And then we just shuffle through and just redisplay the uh, correct page. Again, this was adapted from the colony demo, so I don't really have to go through it too specifically. That's just a refresher. And now we can go ahead and move over to the colony. So here in Setup UI, obviously this is where we set up the resources status box. Simple enough. And then this is the home page content. Or at least I should say, uh, this part right here is the admin page that we set up specifically. Because we also, and I did not get to it, but we need to set up the sectors page. The sectors page is the a silent forest page in a dark room. It is the page where you go to collect from your traps. And again, in a dark in light like what we will use is well, it's going to be called sectors, as I said. So it's going to be called sectors and it's going to have all the sectors you can collect from. And you can also see the uh, sectors that automatically collect. For example, I believe we have a scout box uh, scout bot rather sector that auto collects itself i may be wrong about that i know that the residential sector automatically collects from itself but we don't actually show the residential sector on the sectors page because the collection for this residential sector is basically people randomly showing up to join your colony so therefore there is no interaction and therefore we don't want to show a progress on it because again it's randomly it's in random number of people it's kind of a random event instead so that will not be shown on the sectors page but other stuff will be point being so so so, so. yeah actually you know scout bots scout bots are an activated ability they're not automatic now that i think about it uh otherwise uh Obviously, all the HTML and uh, styling to get this whole entire thing set up. Like I said right here, I decided to go with CVG for displaying the power meter. It just, I figured it would ultimately look best. Uh, you know, one of those things. You can do good stuff with CSS and HTML elements, so I'm not going to say that this is absolutely the correct way to do it. But I figured I could do something more interesting looking with less code using CVG than with CSS. So that was the point here. After we get done setting all this up, uh, you'll see actually this is something to mention. So I'm using field sets here because I found out that these actually come with the title in the border. So we're going to hop back over to edge really quick. And that's this part right here. You see these uh, titles in the border right here. While a dark room did not have this on everything, I did actually like this labeling system better. 
So I decided to go with it, that for both of these boxes. And like I said, uh, field set allows you to just put this here without adding extra CSS. So that is why I ended up going with that as my option for instead of div. So instead, this is this could be span, right? This could be a special span with offsets put in it to align it at the top of the border of the div, if this was a div. But I've already explained the reason for using this instead, because it's simpler. Uh, next up, to draw the actual green bars for the battery, that's what this code is. So again, if I needed to modify this to 10 levels, we would just go 10 there. And then I'd have to modify it like this right here to be 10 because we're going by 10 percentage increments instead of 20. That would be 10 as well. Uh, the width would go down to t uh, 9% probably. I might do 9.5. And do, 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 do. yeah, anyway, that would be, I think that's everything that would have to change. That is how we set up the bars. So basically for each of the five bars, its level is 20 times the uh, I times the, well, it's times this I plus one because this I is also used for the space between the bars. Otherwise the bars would be clumped up, right? So the alternative here would do be the I minus one. And then we could just say I here and change this to one and minus equals. That would be the other way to write this up. That way each level is one times 20, two times 20, three times 20, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we just have to compensate for it over here. This would then be the gap between the bars right there. But I decided to do it the other way around. Doesn't necessarily matter which way you go with it. Otherwise, each of them are just a rectangle. Again, we may change how this works to make it more interesting. Next up, we register the page with a button. Now, a dark shell I decided to go with, it being a shell of a station when you first get to it. And obviously, a dark room is how you start out in a dark room. That You start out in a dark room, and therefore the button at the top of the screen, where you would select, you know, where you page through, is labeled a dark room. In the future, we do have to set up a callback, and that will probably be down here in update. Uh, do, 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 there we go, update power level. To modify what a dark shell changes to, and my plan with that is actually to do it in two parts. I it would actually be an update power level and update meeples, which is not set up yet. But the, my idea is is that a dark room changes to. Uh, I can't remember. It just changes to stuff like a small village, a hamlet, a village, you know, stuff like that. And I decided in this version, I actually think it would be interesting to split this into two segments. So your power level will change this dark to a dim, a well lit, a bright, and then your meeples, how many meeples you have out of the maximum number of meeples you can have, would modify this from shell to group or community or colony or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we actually have two modifiers going on here, one indicating the uh, battery health of the colony and the other one indicating the uh, community health, I guess I'll call it, of the colony. I thought that'd be interesting. Moving on, this obviously is where we set up our initial resources in the resources panel. First off, we need to figure out what the resources is. That's this block here. And then we call update resources. Update resources gets called whenever resources change. So we just spoof a change in order to populate it initially. That way we don't have to rewrite this code down here. We can just reuse this code by spoofing a resource change event. Next up, this is the add batteries. This is the uh, replace batteries rather button. I call it add batteries, but the text on it is replace batteries because the batteries in the colony are dead when you get there. So therefore they're not empty. They're just plain dead. 
So therefore you're always replacing batteries, even when the batteries that you put in die later, then you're replacing batteries. You aren't infinitely adding batteries. That's the logic be behind the naming. And that obviously just gets connected, well, maybe not obviously. So that gets connected to this.colony.increase power level, which is a function I added because we never had a use for it before. And all that really does is just checks that we can add. So it checks that we can add, uh, increase the power and then pays for the increase in power and then calls events, triggers events, which then we can use to update the UI. So the UI gets updated via these events. And if we run out of resources, then the UI will also be able to flash that we do not have the resources here. And likewise, the message log will be able to reflect that as well, just by listening to the events. Again, we are doing this all, or we're trying to keep this all on event uh, based, uh, what you call it? I'm blanking on the proper name of it, but <laughs> uh, regardless, everything is based on events right now. And then again, we're spoofing the update power level event right here just to set the initial power level on the colony, assuming that the colony was loaded off of a save file as opposed to a brand new level, a brand new game rather. Then here we have the setup sectors, which I put in place, but have not done any code for that will come next. And this will set up the second page, which again is the sectors page, and that will have all the activated abilities. And actually, that should also have the uh, meeple management. That's the other thing that should happen on that page is putting. Um, so actually, I take that back. We may do that differently. So in a dark room, you had both uh, in a silent forest. A silent forest is the tab you go to in order to both collect from your traps, collect wood and uh manage your meeples that's where that page is or that's what where the man pe Ugh, i can't talk holy cow um <laughs> i'm gonna blame this on still getting over my cold from this past week um that is where everything is located we may split that up and only have sectors on one page and then have another page which is like let's say the council or something like that where uh, you can go ahead and manage where the meeples are working. We'll consider. We'll look at that. Otherwise, flash resources is the callback for the no resources event on the colony. So that is if you try to buy something or increase the power level and do not have enough resources, then as per our other demo, we just flash that resource in the resource status. Update resources, I've already kind of explained, that just updates the resources status page with the resources that you have when their quantities or when they, their quantities change or new resources that are added, which is effectively a quantity change, right? Because it goes from none to something. And do, 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 let's see. I mean, nothing really too much to say about this, right? We've got a body. The resources table is a body. There is a table body rather I should say it's a table it has a T body and then we just go ahead and try to find the r correct row we need if we do not have the correct row we need which is right here then we create the row and then at the very end if we need to resort everything because we resources need to be kept in or they don't need to but for cleanliness sake we are keeping resources in ID order on the resource list so if we need to reorder them because they got fell out of order, then we can go ahead and do this. We can go ahead and resort the uh, resources. And that is everything here. So I think it's time for me to hop back over to the GitHub and take a look at that. See if there's anything else I'm missing. Obviously, I'm not going through. So over here in UI. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm not going to go through all of this CSS stuff. I don't... It's one of those things. I don't see the point in explaining why I did all this. It's one of those things. I did all this because it looks the way I want, right? So that is really all it is. Is this stuff happens because it's supposed to happen. Because it looks bad if it doesn't happen. Or it does not look as good, I guess, is the only other way I can say it. 
let's see here. Uh, actually, one other thing I should mention. Um, the demos, just for the record, on this release, if you go to GitHub and you get this release specifically, if you're, uh, what do you call it? If you are uh, pulling from the main GitHub source right now, I am 90% sure that I've broken some of these demos. So demos may be broken at this point. You may want to not pull the most recent uh, commit. Fair warning, I have not gone back and checked to see if I've broken any of them, but I'm pretty sure I have. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do, do, do. Anything else? Uh, okay. Yeah, that is something that I should mention. Uh, let me just see if this is the very last thing that I want to say. I uh, want to address, and then we will address it and move on. Uh, we did everything in Colony GUI, Game GUI, Site GUI. Oh, I guess, uh, all right, so really quick, this is a sidebar over here in Site GUI, I forgot. Uh, this is the attach panel resize callback. So this is after we create the panel, the status panels, and this is how we generate the callback for shrinking it and enlarging it. So there is that, again, that is a very quick thing. And then, do, 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 do. All right, yeah, so this is the last thing I'm going to talk about over here on colony.js. Uh, actually, this is the wrong colony.js. Let me get the other one. There we go. I am, I redid, I think I redid. So here's the weird thing. Down here, in this loop right here, this was this dot resources. This dot resources was the only thing we were storing on the colony. I changed this to storage and individual weapons items and resources because I remembered that the colony does not just have uh, resources. It actually acts as a, an infinite storage box for weapons items before you go out on adventure. Then when you go out on adventure, you take some of those with you up to your carry weight and the rust stay back in the colony. So I forgot we actually need those as a storage space on the colony. So I modified that. And additionally, when I was getting this set up, the weapons and items, I said, well, wait a second. We actually don't need, uh, we don't need the actual weapon instances because the weapon instances are not stackable, but they need to be stacked inside of the colony because the colony is infinite storage. And therefore you just want the quantity of weapons. So I decided to redo that to just be weapon ID quantity in an array, okay? And I was looking at this code right here for store uh, for resources. And right here we were doing resource ID equals resource, okay? And the resource was actually the resource object, instance object. And I realized in other places, like for example right here, this is referring to that slot as a quantity, not as an, uh, what you call it? Not as an resource instant. And likewise right here, this was doing the same thing. It was expecting the array index to be a quantity, not a resource object. So I don't know how this got messed up. I just know that the only reason it did not become an issue is because we uh, were never actually initializing the colony with resources to begin with, as far as I'm aware. If we were, then this definitely should have crashed it because everything else, all the other functions, were expecting a quantity. So for that reason, this other stuff is just all set up as item ID, this is an array, and this is the quantity at that given array index. So I made that modification to this and to that point, it occurred to me that over here in character, we could actually do the same exact thing. So in a dark room, it was possible to actually bring multiple weapons with you 
but you'd only be able to use one of each instance of the weapon at a time. So, that is not a, that is not exactly how we're doing it. Because I wanted to be able to have a weapons array that had duplicate weapons in it, because it's a mech and therefore you can have duplicate weapons, you know? Again, with a dark room, it didn't make sense that you could somehow carry a spear, a gun, three guns, four guns, you know, shotgun, sniper rifle, bolas, you know, it didn't make sense that you could have all this, these items on you, which is why I made the get, uh, well, one of the reasons why I made the uh, joke that you were some kind of Eldritch Abomination with multiple arms, right? But with a mech, it makes more sense. I've been over this before. Uh, my point being what I'm getting at here is that I'm thinking of splitting character up into character equipment, which is obviously weapons, are uh, weapons, items, and resources, something like that, and then having loadout as a separate option, as a separate uh, attribute. And the point being is that. You would move weapons from this weapons array into loadout. And this weapons array, instead of being actual weapons, uh, weapon instances, I was thinking about doing the same exact thing over, as we're doing over here in Colony and just having it as a quantity. And then when you initialize the combat character, uh, let's find combat character. Oh, we are in combat character right now. So... Over here is where I would be doing those changes over here in player character. And then in combat character, uh, it would get the weapon IDs and then initialize the weapons itself on its this dot weapons, this dot items, etc. So that is the concept. The concept that I'm playing with right now is that nothing is actually initialized. They're all just numbers over here on player and they only become instances when you are over here in combat character. This, uh, one of those things may not be a good idea. We'll see what happens. The fact of the matter is, is that these could be initialized to begin with on the player character when you leave the colony. So when you add them to your character before leaving, leaving the quantity, uh, colony rather that is the other way to do it because obviously they are not initialized on the colony the colony right now only has IDs and quantities for IDs so we'll see what happens I'm just throwing it out there as something that I'm debating doing in the future and that does wrap it up that is the last of the changes for this commit so uh, let's see that was close to 50 minutes of talking uh again 30 minutes is what i hope to cover on each update 30 minute recap i think that maybe we went over well going over by 20 minutes actually probably suggests that there were slightly more here than i thought there was i guess i got to consider that option however i i'm going to be obnoxious here and claim that it is not that the uh, update was so massive, but rather that there was just a lot of stuff that needed to be implemented. Yeah, see, th this is the biggest problem, right? And this is why I keep on saying this. You do not see most of the stuff that goes on on this back page, right? Like, for commit updates, I kind of want to be able to see massive changes in the actual visual content of the game state so for example when we were doing demos and i did a big update that had a lot getting done right an update that i actually felt was worth the video then we actually implemented full systems at that point we were actually implementing full systems that you could see in the demo so all of a sudden we were able to fire a weapon you know we were all of a sudden able to uh activate an item and use its callback, etc, etc, etc. And when it's just setting up this main page, like, let's be real, like, how much is really here, right? 
Like, how much does this look like? How much work does this look like? Okay, I got a button that increases the green dots, and then when you run out, it flashes the batteries. And I got some things here that, you know, flip back and forth. And honestly, I probably want to flip those buttons around. Those buttons maybe should be backwards, so that the down arrow is when you, you know, is uh, this is not currently down, but this button will make it go up, you know? But regardless, point being is like, what does all this represent to you? <laughs> you know, how much work does this really seem like right here, getting this set up? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just mulling it over at this point is what I'm doing right now. So anyway, that has been an update. Um, one of those things, a little annoyed that this was eight hours ish of time just to get the first page set up. Again, we have to set up the second page next and then the second page being sectors and meeple organization maybe, or maybe just sectors. And if it's just sectors, then we also have to set up the third page, which would then be the meeple organizations. And that would be enough for me for an update video. And then we'd have to set up a fourth page at that point, it, depending on whether or not the uh, two are one. And that would be the preparing to leave. And that plus showing the map would probably be another update. So assuming each of these take me about at, uh, 10 hours, which hopefully is not the case. Hopefully most of this eight hour section was actually getting the game GUI set up and deciding how I wanted to handle that and the message box. You know, so hopefully that's not 10 hours a piece because if those are 10 hours a piece, that is another 20 hours, which brings us up to about 70 hours. Again, I'm not really doing the math just yet. I don't want to do the math until I'm all the way done. But nominally, I'm guessing that's about 70 hours of work. And then we're not even... Uh, well, I, yeah, see, I was going to say at that point, we're not even that close to being done. But I guess I am somewhat wrong about that. The... The fact of the matter is that everything on the map is already done because of the map demo. Because of the map demo, I'm actually more or less just copy pasting stuff or just hooking stuff up. So we may be a lot closer to getting done once we hit that point than I think it is because of all the work we did in the map demo. The final, final thing that we would really need to hook up that may take a while is all the unlocks, getting all the unlock set up all this flags for sector unlocks and meeple jobs getting all that hooked up may be the last major thing we need to do and then after that point i guess the only thing left would be to figure out the end game because i haven't really done any work on determining what the end game should be or look like which is Honestly, not the way you normally design things now, is it? So if you're writing a book, if you're designing a game, you decide where the plot's going first, in theory. And we have not done that. <laughs> I have not done that. I have not put any thought into where this game is going. What the... Whether or not there is a big bad, or if our job isn't to find a big bad, but to do something else. You know... I mean, the fact of the matter is, is with the flavor that I've been using for the game so far, at least based on the map demo, the uh, goal would be to get the colony to a habitable, habitable planet. That would be what the game's purpose is. And how exactly we do that is kind of up in the air. So, for example, I could imagine this being a multi-level map where you travel from sector to sector, clear the map, and then travel to the next sector. I could imagine that, but that's not really in the spirit of a dark room. A dark room was, a again, a minimalist, roguelike adventure. Um, hmm. And we're trying to keep in that subgenre. Now, one thing I guess I should say is... And let me pop this back up so you don't have the blue screen to death. Um, 
this UI, I like it better than a dark room. However, I will have to say that back to, uh, I said this when we first started is I don't know what a dark room means when they're saying minimalist because everything in the game is minimalist. The combat, the combat is minimalist. The player progression is min minimalist. The base, uh, management is minimalist. Everything about the game is minimalist, right? The UI also was minimalist. It is a very slim uh, AI, a very slimmed down AI, cut out all the fat, etc., etc., etc. And I had said that that was actually a turnoff for me, that there was not enough player feedback in the UI. And it actually made the game less enjoyable for that reason. Now, it's possible, though, that I've gone a little bit too far with everything here. And that's an argument to be had that, uh, for example, buttons in a dark room were stylized very flat because, again, it's a minimalist aesthetic. Whether or not my button should be flat here is a question. Whether or not these bright colors should be here is a question. So one of those things, the aesthetic, whether or not the aesthetic really needs to be minimalist is I think an open question so far. I definitely could see the argument that, well, if you're making a minimalist game, the UI should also be minimalist. But like I said, my experience playing the game is that it was not, it had certain attributes to it being a minimalist UI that actually made it less enjoyable to play. That actually hindered the player's experience. Again, in my experience, per my gameplay. So, um, yeah, that is, I think, the last of the topics I wanted to cover. So, as always, guys, thank you guys for watching if you have been. And thanks for sticking in there for this nearly hour update and discussion that I posted today. And I hope you guys have a great and wonderful day, afternoon, or evening for the, the, wherever you're at in the world. Wow, okay, it has been <laughs> a while. It has been a couple days since I've streamed. Blew my own outro. Nice. I hope you have a great and wonderful day, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will catch you next time.